Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Betha Sewa'ai and in this series of videos, I'm going to tell you about lupus. This word is short for systemic lupus erythematosus and I have four main goals as you go through this series. I want you to be able to know what is lupus, that's number one. Two, how do you know if you or someone you love has lupus what are the signs and symptoms to look for number three how is a diagnosis of lupus made and number four if you have lupus what kind of support can you receive and also if you don't have lupus have you learned enough about it to be an ambassador tell someone else because this month of may is lupus awareness month and on May 10th, you're supposed to wear something purple, like I'm wearing something purple, and do hashtag lupus, hashtag lupus awareness, and let everybody know that you are rooting for the people who have lupus erythematosus. So what is lupus? Lupus is the short layman's term for systemic lupus erythematosus. Why is it systemic? So it is a multi-system disease in that it affects several organ systems um, and I'm just going to give a quick example so you have thyroiditis that affects the thyroid gland and you have um, diseases like Addison's disease that just affects the adrenal gland and then you maybe heard about multiple sclerosis or myasthenia gravis these diseases affect certain specific organs so lupus comes along and it affects multiple systems the skin the eyes um, the muscles the joints and so many other organs so i'm going to show you an, an, an image on the screen that shows you that on the left side you have those diseases that affect single um, organs and then on the right side you have systemic lupus erythematosus that affects so many organs and so that is why it's called a systemic lupus. It means it involves multiple systems. It is also autoimmune in that under normal circumstances, your body doesn't fight itself. You have an immune system made up of cells, which I, in layman's terms, call them soldiers. In a country, when you have a foreign invasion, the army is called on to fight. Um, similarly, in the human body we have these white cells that are supposed to recognize and fight foreign agents at some point in time something which we're yet to understand occurs inside the genes of an individual turns on a switch and causes the body cells to form antibodies or soldiers against these nuclear antigens and so they're called anti-nuclear antibodies or ANAs for short. These ANAs fight the body cells and because your cells are everywhere, your eyes, nose, mouth, um, chest, abdomen, joints, you name it, it's the autoimmune disease that affects multiple systems. Finally, it's a chronic condition. You know, you might get the flu and it will resolve or you might get um, a heart attack and it goes away but lupus is a chronic disease that once it's calm it stays it's something that individuals have to deal with for a long time and so essentially when we say somebody has lupus they have a multi-system disease that is autoimmune and that is chronic lupus for some reason affects women more than men up to a ratio of nine is to one and then when you take the different races, it affects black people about four to five times more than Caucasian counterparts. In general, in the US, we would say minority, but if you go to places like Africa or Asia, there's still a preponderance of all these other races versus the white race. We still don't understand all the factors. We know that black women, for example, may have, are more likely to use chemicals in their hair and they seem to have more estrogen levels when they use these chemicals and we don't completely understand if these are some of the factors that cause the increase 
There's also something very interesting I like to tell you about lupus, which I'm going to show you in this diagram. About 10 years before clinical diagnosis of lupus, these antibodies form. So we don't know when the inciting event occurs, but we do know that about 50% of the risk of lupus is genetic. In fact, about 200 different what they call genetic foci have been found on chromosome 6. They're not in every individual, but they sort of add up that something happens to the genes that causes these autoantibodies to turn on or these changes to occur in the nuclear material leading to all these changes. Is it food? We don't know. Is it ultraviolet light? We don't know. Is it something um, that we're taking in? We do know that some medications can cause drug-induced lupus and it's irreversible just like all the other lupus um, cases. And we also know that sometimes some bacteria like um, some viruses like Epstein-Barr virus um, can lead to or has been found in patients with lupus but we've actually not identified one particular bacteria or fungus that leads to that triggers the lupus um, to occur we also do know that in certain women when they take oral contraceptives, they either get a lupus flare or an actually new diagnosis of lupus. So there's something going on with those hormones. And I'm just gonna explain very, very briefly some of these concepts about antibodies. So assuming your body cells all look like this, okay? Um, your body's made up of building blocks, whether it's your eyes, nose, mouth, blood, we have building blocks. I'm just using oranges to illustrate. And then something happens and the oranges start looking like apples. Now, the change that actually occurs is not the outside, it's the inside of the apple, what we call the nucleus, is sitting inside the cell that actually changes. So then your body forms antibodies. I'm just using these pins, antibodies against this new change. And so, this newly changed cell now begins to get attacked by all these antibodies. They attack it, and as they attack it, they form what we call complexes or immune complexes that travel through the arteries of your body and begin to be deposited all over. So I just have this short model here I made to demonstrate what exactly may be happening. So you have these normal, these are just examples. These are your body cells. They look perfectly normal. They're happy, you're happy. And then something happens and it changes to these purple looking cells. The, the nucleus has changed. Now, these are your body's soldiers. I'm gonna use these to be your B cells, I mean your um, T cells and these are going to be your B cells these are supposed to be soldiers so they recognize this and say hey you're foreign what are you doing here so they start forming antibodies and those antibodies really they look Y shaped so they look exactly like this so these antibodies decide now I'm going to put away the normal looking cells these antibodies decide you don't have to be here. We're going to fight you. And so they start attacking. They start attacking these cells, abnormal cells. They form complexes and float all over the body. Now, this change, as I'm going to show you in the next slide, which is um, it's a slide that has four different levels. At the top, it shows you the inciting event. And the next one shows you what they're calling a preclinical phase. This phase can last up to 10 years, where these antibodies, which are called, some are called anti-nuclear antibodies, ANAs, double-stranded DNAs, um, anti-Smith antibodies, these antibodies can be detected up to 10 years before a diagnosis of lupus is made. During this time, 
an individual may get maybe an eye abnormality, skin changes, heart changes, but they haven't met the criterion for making a full diagnosis of lupus. So they're called the preclinical stage. Then you go to the third stage, as you see on the slide, where now these deposits, these immune complex deposits, complex meaning this attaching to the abnormal, but the abnormal cells have developed to a point where people start now manifesting disease. They have kidney trouble, they have a skin rash, they have joint abnormalities, and then they've met the criteria for being called fully blown lupus disease where a diagnosis is made. So lupus diagnosis requires a blood test, the ANA test, which is positive in 95% of patients and confirmed by all these other antibody tests, plus at least four body systems involved. And we'll talk about that in the next video. In the meanwhile, May 10th, remember to wear purple, and also the month of May, hashtag lupus, hashtag lupus awareness, and definitely join me as we raise awareness for lupus. Thank you for watching.